So at my school, students are required to sign in and sign out whenever they enter the classroom or leave the classroom early or whatever. So if they're tardy to class, if they are using a pass to go to the library or to the restroom, etc. Our school wants to keep track of where students are at all times. So instead of doing this on paper, like I've done for years, I have used a Google form. Students can use their phone. I have a QR code that goes straight to this. So as they're walking out, they can be filling this out or they can use one of the computers in my classroom. The best part is I've now made it so that if a student chooses tardy because they came in late to class, it will automatically send an email directly to their parent, letting them know that they were tardy immediately. So here is an example. So let's say Sally was tardy to class, to my biology class, because she was talking with her friends. She submits this form and it will look up information that I have on a spreadsheet and it will automatically send an email to her parents. So I have set it up that my email address right now is her parent and right here I have an email that says Sally was tardy to biology today and it tells the time, the reason that she was tardy, and then I have a link to our campus learning management system or um, data system that parents can look up grades and attendance, and you can even have it where it translates it into another language. So I have it automatically using Google Translate, translate my email from English into Spanish. You can choose other languages as well, and my guess is that you might even be able to have it translate into multiple languages. But how cool is that? It does take a, quite a bit of setup to do, but in the rest of this video, I go through all the step-by-step -step instructions of how to recreate this for your own class. There are quite a few different things that we need to set up in order to run this form or create this script. The first thing that I'd recommend doing is creating a folder within your Google Drive. That's for all the documents that are gonna be related to this task. So if you go to create and choose folder, you would then title it something like sign in, sign out, like I did right here. Once we've done that, the first thing you're going to want to create is your sign-in sheet, the actual form that students fill out. So if you click on create, you would choose form. And this is what mine looks like. I've already created it here. Now within my Google Apps for Ed setting, it says require Carmont High School login to view this form and automatically collect um, respondents high school, Carmont High School username. I'm going to leave those undone just because I want other people, potentially other teachers, if I want to share this, I want them to be able to see this without having to log in. I also want to show this to the parents at back to school night and it would be too hard if we had to log in with the GAFE account. So I'm going to leave those undone, but you could decide to check those off if that works for you. Now in my sign-in sheet I have a place for the students first and last name and I've made all of these um, mandatory for students to fill out so you can see that by the little red star. Um, to do that you just click required question when you're creating the question. So these ones here, the first three for first name, last name, and student ID, these are all text questions. Next I have the class. And I chose the class because um, I have some students who are in both my biology class and my AVID class. And if I didn't have this here, we'd run into some problems when running the script because I want the form letter to got to parents saying, your student was tardy to biology today or your student was tardy to AVID today. And if I had that in my spreadsheet, um, I can only have the student and the parent's spreadsheet once and this will make more sense later. So I just added in the biology and AVID here. They just have to check it off. Then I have the situation of why the student is signing into my class or signing out of my class. They could be coming in late. 
they could be leaving the room early because they have a pass to go to their sporting game. Or maybe they have um, a pass to go to the restroom, so they're leaving my room. Or they could re be returning to class with a pass from the office or leaving school early, etc. So there's different choices here. And then I have the reasons. Um, they were tardy because they were in the office. They were called to the office because they had a doctor's appointment, etc. And I left a spot for other. Now down at the bottom for the confirmation page, you can type in a special confirmation like thank you for filling this out, please go to your seat, or um, you probably don't want that though because if they're leaving, they're not going to go to their seat. So I just left it as the um, default, your response has been recorded. And then I can check off, show link to submit another response. That way if another student came in late, they can just click on that link to go back to this form. Now I need to choose a response destination. So if I'm going to click on this folder right here, this is going to put the answers to this form into a new spreadsheet. You can choose another spot, but I'm going to choose um, to create this new one here. And I'm going to press create. Now when I go back to my Google Drive, you can see that the sign in sign out responses is in that folder that I was working with in. After you've created your form that students are going to fill out, what we need to do now is have the parent information. Now I chose to have it as a separate spreadsheet. You could potentially put it in your spreadsheet that we created from the form as another tab down here at the bottom. That would definitely work. However, I'm going to choose to have it as a separate complete spreadsheet because I might want to use this information to create other forms to do other things with. So I'm going to keep mine separate. And so I just did create spreadsheet and I created this spreadsheet right here, parent information roster. So I named it parent information roster and I have a spot for student number, student first name, student last name, student email. I put their period. Um, again, if I have a student in two different periods, I'm going to have the student only listed once here. So let's say I had Sally, oops, one too many numbers there. Let's say I had Sally Smith in my fourth period biology class also. What would happen is when she fills out the form and she types in her student number, to get this to run correctly, we can't have her in here twice. So if I have a student for two different periods, what I'm going to do is write down something like this, like second and fourth, avid and biology, and I'm going to delete this one here. Generally, I'd import all this information from my student information system so I don't have to type everything in. But what's going to happen now is when I go to um, run the merge after we set everything up, if Sally is tardy to second period, she types in her student ID number, it will look for this number, and it will send an email to her mom, Sandra Smith. If she's tardy to fourth period, it would look for her number and again send an email to Sandra Smith. In the email section, I want it to say your student was tardy to AVID if she was tardy that class or to biology. So that's why I mentioned in the sign in sign out sheet that I had the place for biology or AVID because I can use those when I'm doing the mail merge to send out the email to the parent and I'll explain that when we see that in the future. Now what we need to do is get everything set up to trigger the mail merge when a student marks tardy that it will send an email to their parent. So we're going to go into the sign in sign out responses sheet 
And notice at the bottom we're on the form responses. We need to create a new sheet. And I'm going to call this sheet, I'm going to change the name. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to say imported parent roster. And this is, we're going to um, put in a formula that's going to take the information from our parent information roster, this one here, and it's going to basically copy it into this sheet. Word for word, everything's going to be there. So if I happen to edit this sheet, let's say I get a new student sometime during the school year, I'd add them into this sheet, and it would automatically now be added to this sheet here. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm on the sign in, sign out responses in my imported parent roster. In field 1A, what I'm going to do is write an equal import range. And notice when I start writing, it kind of already gives me what, um, some choices. So I'm going to choose this one here at the bottom, import range. And now I need the spreadsheet key. And the spreadsheet key is back on the parent information roster up at the top of the page in the URL. Notice it says key equals, and then there's this big long string of numbers. Then there's a pound signed GID equals zero. I want to copy what's after the key equal sign up into the pound sign. So I'm going to press control C and I'm going to go back here and add that in, paste it in. Then um, one thing I did forget is before those numbers, I need to put a quotation at the end of these numbers, a quotation. Now what I'm going to add is a comma. And now I'm going to put another set of quotations. And what I need to do is tell it which page I need. And the page I need from here is happens to be sheet one. So I'm going to type in sheet one. And I'm going to put in an exclamation point. And now I need to tell it wh what are the range of columns. So this goes from A to N. So my last set of um, information is N there. So now back over here, after my exclamation point, I'm going to put A colon N. And then I'm going to put another um, pair of quotation marks. And I'm going to close the bracket there and press Enter. And notice it loads, it takes a second, but all the information is there. Now you want to make sure that you don't edit this page. I don't want to go in and add a student here. I'm going to do that on this page here, on my um, master sheet, my parent information roster. And again, the reason I did it this way is because I want to be able to like copy and paste this information into other spreadsheets, and I think it might be easier doing that from a whole separate spreadsheet that I can just make a copy of. Now what we need to do is get the parent information onto this particular sheet. Because when we run the mail merge to send the email, we have to have everything on one particular page. So we're going to use something called VLOOKUP, which is going to look up information on our imported parent roster page here, which is our um, what we had as our sheet one that we did the import range feature. All right. so. What I'm going to do in this box here, H, I'm going to type in the formula for VLOOKUP. So I press equals and then VLOOKUP. I start to type it and here it is. And what I need to do first is I need to tell it what I'm using as my code that's matching or pairing things up. I don't want it to be student first name because I might have many students with the same first name or even the same last name. So that student ID number, the reason I've said it's important to include is because we're going to use that as a match. It's something that's unique. Each There's only one of each student ID number. So my student ID number is going to be right here in um, box D1. So I'm going to type in D. I'm actually going to type in um, a dollar sign D1. 
then I'm going to type in comma, and then I'm going to type in the um, sheet that it is. And so my sheet here is the imported parent roster. So I'm going to type in that name, imported parent roster. Um, originally we had it sheet one, I actually renamed mine. So you might be typing in sheet one right now. Then I'm going to type in the exclamation point. Now I need to tell it the range that I want it to look for on that other sheet. And remember that that was from A to N. So what I'm going to do is type in dollar sign A colon dollar sign N. And then I'm going to have a comma. And I want this box here to be what's after the student ID. And if you look over here on our, um, oops, wrong one. If you look over here, it's going to be um, student first name, and that's not the first column, it's the second column. So I'm going to type in A colon N comma. I'm going to type in 2 comma 0 and then parenthesis and enter. Did not find value student ID. Okay, something is wrong. All right. So I notice what's wrong with my formula, why it didn't work. Notice that in my form responses right here, I call it a student ID number. In my imported parent roster, I call it a student number. It is extremely important that those match up. So I can't edit it, remember, here because this is the imported range. So I'm going to go back to my parent information roster and I'm going to change it to match. So again, I just want to double check. It is supposed to be student ID number. So I'm going to do student ID number. Now I'm going to move over here. This is student ID number. Here we go. Parent ported roster. Okay, I'm going to refresh this. And now it says student ID number. So if I go back over here to my VLOOKUP, it automatically works. It says student first name. So it's really, really important that your t key terms match up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in for all of the rest of my terms because I want everything that's on this page here, I want it to look up because I want to be able to email both parents if they have two parents listed in here. Um, with the form that we're using, it actually can send text messages if you want to do that, so that's why I have a spot for parent cell. But what I'm going to do now is in my form responses, I'm just going to copy and paste and then I'm going to change things up a little bit. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here, but I don't want student first name, I want the next column over. So the next column over was student last name, and that's column one, two, three. So back over to form response, this one's so I'm going to edit, I'm just going to change this to number three. And now it should say student last name. So I'm going to do this all the way to the end. After copying and pasting to each of them to the end, I need to go in and change the number. So this one here was two. When I paste this, this originally had a two here. I needed to change this one to three, four, five, six, etc., all the way to the end. One thing I did catch is notice I had class here, and this one was called class. I needed to switch this. So um, this is a VLOOKUP, and it's from the import parent roster so where I need to change it is actually right up here. Now I'm afraid that these um, quotations might actually be a bad idea so we'll say how about um, class periods or something like that just so it's something different and so when I change it here notice that here it will change um, to class periods. Where did it go? Um, it hasn't changed yet it looks like I need to refresh but now it should say class periods. Still hasn't changed. Uh, let's just press enter right here. Um, it does change automatically, um, sometimes not as quickly as one would like. Um, so oh, yes, class periods, sorry, I am blind. Um, so now here, this says class per um, periods in both spots. In my form responses from my V lookup, it now says class periods, and the two are actually different.
So now we have everything we need to create the formula script. So we're going to go into our tools and script gallery and we're going to type in formula and it's one word and we're going to install the script. The script is going to do all of our magic for us. So the first thing we need to do is run initial installation and it's going to give you this kind of scary authorization required. It's OK. Press OK. And it's going to ask to grant access to calendar. One of the things that Formule does is it allows you to connect to your calendar and create events. So if you collect like dates and times for parents to sign up for meetings, it will automatically put it in your calendar. I'm going to grant access. Um, you can deny it if you don't want that there, but it's not a big deal. Now I can run the script and press close. So I'm going to go into Formule and I'm going to click on Run Install Installation again. And notice that there's a README that pops up with information about how to use this. I'm going to just click back on my form responses and go to Formula and I'm going to do step one. It's going to bring up step by step instructions of what to do to run this. So I'm going to define my merge source settings. And it asks which sheet you want that's going to collect the data to do the merge. And the first one is our form responses and that's the one we want to use. Um, you can auto create a unique case number for each form submission. You don't need to worry about that. But what we do want is to copy down the formula columns when new form submissions arrive. This is going to, as a new submission comes in, it's going to do that VLOOKUP to get the parent information. We also want it to copy down the results as values instead of like imported VLOOKUP formulas because it's going to make our data um, run better. And we need to choose which ones we want to drop down or um, run through, um, the copy down the formulas. So I'm going to choose all of the ones that are in the list right here. I'm just checking all the boxes and we got down to the end and I'm going to save my settings. After completing step one in the formula, where to find the mail source settings, Merge, sorry, merge source settings. What is supposed to happen, which didn't seem to happen this time, is normally these cells here, it copied down the formula, which that did not seem to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight the ones that I want copied, and I'm going to drag them down so that it gets it down to the next, um, into these boxes. And now I'm going to do step two, set up a mail merge. And what that ends up doing is f first I need to turn on the email merge feature and I want to trigger it on form submit. And you get to choose how many different emails you want and I only need one. I'm going to change the name here um, from template one, email template one to tardy template. And my column I'm going to choose instead of timestamp, I'm going to choose situation because I want to trigger this email when a student chooses tardy on the situation part of the form. So then I type in tardy and submit my settings. What ends up happening after I do that is it will open up a tardy template right here. And I've already filled this out. So you get to choose who you want it to reply to and you'll get to choose who you want to send it to. Now notice these kind of funny looking words. These are available merge templates that are automatically set up for you down here. So you would copy and paste them. So I have parent email one, parent email two, and I'm CCing me. This is my other email that my school has. So that way I'll get this email as well. You can also CC your students by putting a comma in. Then I chose it to say like, Sally was tardy to biology today. And then here's my email. You can even add in links so that it will be an HTML link, hyperlink that they can um, actually um, click on. And it tells you how to add the HTML tags to add the hyperlinks. Now um, I have it set up. Um, I'm going to preview and perform a manual merge. And right now it says the coordinates or dimensions of the range are not valid. And I believe that is because I do not have any, no one has filled out this form. All right, so now we're gonna test this out. We are gonna have Sally sign in late to class because she was tardy today. 
And let's say she is in biology and she was tardy because she was talking with her friends in the hall. She would submit this form. And now if we go to our response sheet, you can see that this information from columns A through G, this was collected by the form itself. Columns H through T were brought over from the VLOOKUP. And in our right hand column here, it says the tardy template was sent to melissadhero at gmail.com because that's the email of her parent number one. She didn't have a second parent listed. And it was also cc'd to mhero at seq.org, which is my other email that I have it sent to go to. So this email has worked. And let me show you what the email actually looks like. So here's the email um, that I was sent. So I am her parent right now. This is the email that I would get. So dear parent, your student was tardy to biology today. She arrived at this time. This is the reason. Here's a link that will go to our infinite campus portal for students and parents to log in. Thank you for the support. And now because I put in the ES for Spanish, it automatically translated it into Spanish. Now it uses Google Translate. It might not be perfect, but this will really help um, some of our parents. My guess is that if you put a comma and then add in the other codes, you might be able to get it to translate into multiple languages, which would be awesome. Now one last thing to check is I don't want this to go to this email to be sent out unless they choose tardy. So let's say that Sally Smith was an avid, but maybe she um, had to leave the school early because she had a game to go to. She should not have an email sent out for this. So if you look here, it gives you all this information, same thing, but on the right hand side, there was no tardy template status, no email was sent, which is exactly what we want.